In this video, I'm going to go over how I made this drawing and uh, some of the other drawings I've been posting recently. And uh, this technique is a little bit, it's a little bit uh, of an alternative to using a mask layer. Uh, I'm going to show you a trick. So I'm going to launch Stipple. Uh, okay, for my source image, I'm going to use this skull. Uh, I'm going to do a black background. I'm going to do white dots. And let's go ahead and switch this to fine detail. All right, I'm going to reposition this. Uh, this is a little, this technique in itself is a little advanced. I'm going to assume that you already know how to move and, and adjust stuff. So I'm not going to go into the, into the little details because this is already kind of complicated. Uh, I'm going to make this this big. Now, uh, like a lot of things with Stipple, this doesn't work with every image you try. Uh, and in this case, I run into this issue when I go to draw this, you'll see that I, uh, I start to draw the, uh, the outside of the skull and, and that becomes more prominent than the skull itself. So there's this one trick you can do. Um, actually, I'm going to turn off auto threshold altogether. Now you can, uh, if you pull the, the right slider out, you'll limit how the the white spots that you get. So you can almost make just a like a like an auto mask in itself if you get lucky. And this photo, it's it works because if you look at this photo, uh, the skull is uh, very light gray, but the background is uh, is a white. So I can get away with just cut just cutting some of the white out. All right, so I'm going to make some adjustments. I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to make my dot size pretty small. My right, my, my max dot size is going to be small. I'm going to turn my density up a bit. Uh, brush size, medium. All right, now here's something. Uh, we're going to turn the opacity and the hardness down. And I'm going to trash what I've done so far. And let's... Uh, actually, let me, uh, I'm going to increase that dot size just a little bit. Otherwise this will take all, all night. Okay. That looks about good. Okay. So first I'm going to draw the skull on, but we're not doing it at full strength. And, uh, and if you're doing this, you can experiment with that. But right now, I'm not doing it in full strength. And by full strength, I mean full opacity. Um, you'll see that the uh, because of the way that we choked or we cut off the, the uh, top part of the white, that we end up with this kind of cool outlining effect. And all right. So now we, we have the skull pretty much drawn. So next what I'm going to do is I, uh, I'm going to push this, I'm going to push the skull to our gallery. You can do that with the, the arrow, the arrow button. Uh, that way any, uh, any repositioning can get saved and we can use it again. All right. So I'm going to pick a different draw image and let's see. Okay. So now I've got this, uh, this foam and I think this is, uh, maybe like mattress foam or something, just this really tight weave. Okay. And I'll, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. So this is what I mean by an alternative to a mask. So we're going to go and click the layers palette or click the levels palette. And we're going to, um, we're going to return this slider to the right all the way. We're going to put auto on and we are going to, uh, click the invert button. So now we're drawing the, the dark side of the spectrum. Um, okay, now this is key. This is what I mean by the alternative to a mask. So we're going to go to our color palette. Uh, let's turn the opacity up just a little bit. And then in the blend mode, we're going to click clear. 
Uh, and what clear does is clear works as an eraser. So, let's see. For the sake of doing this faster, uh, let's turn the opacity up a little bit more. Uh, okay, so now as we draw, our, so now as we're drawing the foam, the foam is getting erased from our skull image. Uh, so instead of just instead of using a mask, which limits it as you draw, this is like a secondary effect where you go and you and you draw what would have been the mask. But here's what's cool about it, because uh, actually I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this uh, turn auto off, and I'm gonna turn I'm gonna pull our uh, our left hand threshold slider um, out to the left basically allowing a lot of this image to get drawn. All right, now you'll see as we go, or as I go, uh, that we start to erase the dark parts of that foam. And by erase, now we could, you could say, well, why wouldn't we just use black, black dots, because it's gonna match the black, the black background. And that's valid, you could also do that. But if you do use clear, instead of uh, committing to a, a dot color, you'll still get to change the background color if you decide to after the fact. Uh, if we had used black dots, those black dots would still be, uh, would still be apparent in our drawing, whereas this still gives that, uh, that really faint kind of uh, dissolving look to it. So uh, with, this, with this image, I... All right, actually, and now, okay, so now here's another cool thing. So now we can make, to make that uh, that foam even more apparent, let's put auto back on, and we'll click the invert, so now white's on the right-hand side. And now this is key, and this gets me all the time too, is that uh, you you have to you have to return to normal mode, otherwise you're gonna still be in clear mode, you're still gonna be er erasing. So now I'm gonna click back, uh, I'm gonna click back on our dot, make sure my dot is white, and uh, let's decrease this a little bit. I'm gonna undo my last move. Okay, and now we start drawing that foam texture on. So now uh, I'm gonna toggle real quick back to those previous settings using clear and start to delete and remove the uh, the dark portions. So now it's uh, we're it's like we're mixing two images together right now. We've got that skull in the background, and now we're drawing some of the highlights of our foam on, and then we're we're erasing uh, the dark part the dark parts of that foam, and we're really getting some some pretty cool effects. Some pretty cool texture effects. Now, now, uh, if you wanted to use a mask, you'd run into the trouble. Whereas the mask is a hard cutoff, so we don't really build any of the uh, what do you call it? Like the dynamic range that would be built when you're using a draw image, because the draw image is scaling the the dot size itself. So as we're scaling our our delete dot size, so to speak, uh, I'm not going to go into how I did this entire thing. Uh, because I did end up draw taking in another um, I took in another uh, image like this and I kind of played with it towards the top and you'll see that this one looks pretty cool I'll flip let's flip back to that white normal mode so I mean so yeah this is a lot of juggling I mean, this is the, this isn't easy, but I mean, think about how cool this final image comes out looking. And uh, I've seen the stuff you do, Nancy. Spring things. I think you'll have a blast with this. Um, so let's see. So now let's talk about these masks, or well, I won't call them masks. That'll be confusing. Let's talk about these these foam images. Now you'll notice that there's there's very it's a very even contrast throughout this thing and this is kind of crucial if you try to use something that's too complex you're gonna kind of just muddle the image or well I'm not gonna say that I'm sure you can come up with something cool but I find that if you're using uh, 
let's go back to that foam thing because the foam is a great example i mean if you squint your eyes this foam thing just basically becomes gray right it's like this thing is just has a very even contrast to it very even black and white and this create like this is perfect for this so it's almost like your subject can be complex but when you're dealing with other masks and stuff sometimes it's best to to think simply on that um so we're getting to about the 10 minute mark in the video you guys have probably stopped watching uh let's add one more thing though because uh if you looked at those the the example images i showed most of them also used uh, color maps as well, uh, and this is very simple. If you've used uh, if you've used color maps at all in Stipple, you'll totally understand. I'm going to use this. This is from GGZ Life, Life Observation Deck. Uh, real cool woman on uh, Instagram. All right, so this is just going to work the same. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to delete this image altogether, um, and we'll just. Uh, just because like this is the whole the whole thing when with those colorful images I'm just using a rainbow uh, let's increase that dot size so we can see this a little bit better I'm just using like a rainbow background to to draw this stuff on or a rainbow color map and uh, you can just basically apply the same thing I just told you but instead of using white dots just load a rainbow into the color map or any anything you want into the color map and um, but still continue to use that clear that clear effect because that's really what this is about is just using the clear as a different way to uh, build up textures. Now, obviously, like this this one took a whole ton of work. I'm not even 100% sure how I did it. Um, and then this one tonight that I had done I did like this one. This one took a lot of tries. Uh, I'm like juggling back and forth between drawing that that skull image, drawing the masks on or not the masks, drawing the foam layers on, and then bringing the skull back, drawing bits of the skull back on, erasing parts. It's a, it's a whole back and forth uh, juggling act. But you know, I mean, that's what makes Stipple uh, interesting and compelling to use is the fact that it's like, it's work, right? So when you're done, you're happy with it. All right, well, thanks for watching.